Check the description for the following discount codes. Race cars having a hard pedal with a really short amount of travel are a myth is what someone commented on the review of my Acer Tech Invicta pedals. And he followed it up by saying, if you look at some pedal cam videos here on YouTube, you'll see that race cars have huge amounts of brake pedal travel. Now, I know from installing race car pedal boxes into like fast street cars that are used on track. I don't work on like real race race cars, only, you know, people's hobby cars that they take to track days and they might race in low key events. But the pedal boxes that I fit that remove the servo assistance, the brake booster and simply run brake pedal straight onto a master cylinder and then to a, a bias valve to control the front and rear brake bias and then splits off to each caliper. I know exactly how they feel because I've been installing them on and off for the last 10 years in various cars. And I can confirm that after a small amount of initial play, the mechanical clearances and tolerances necessary for things to move, the pedal does harden up to be rock hard because the brake fluid does not compress. Its whole point in life is to not compress. That's literally what it does. So, you know, that's definitely how race car brake pedals should be and how in my experience they are. And it's quite well documented that um, race car brake pedals are, are very heavy, ranging anywhere from sort of around 50 kilos of force up to 150 kilos of force if we're talking F1 cars. And this is documented, you can look it up online for yourselves. But this guy was like, have a look on YouTube and you'll see, you know, pedal cam footage of brake pedals with huge amounts of play, ranging from rally cars, GT3 cars, across all spectrums of, um, of motorsport. So I did exactly that. And lo and behold, he is correct. This is what you see. So I'm going to roll uh, some clips now, and you can just take a look for yourselves. Look at that pedal travel. It's gone all the way, almost, you know, to the, to the floor. Uh, and you know this, this is just the first example. That is a massive amount of travel, and you can see in the pedals here. The you know these are an aftermarket pedal box. They're not just a, a normal you know road car with um, with servo assistance here. Um, you know I mean this one you can't see because it's blurry. But again, this one here you can see it's, this is definitely you know a proper race car pedal box. Uh, and in some of the other clips, you can see the cars going around. I've kind of zoomed in so we can see the, the pedals specifically here. But look at the travel. It's massive. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing like what we see in those Invicta pedals or in other, you know, pedals that have very little travel. And it's not how race car pedals... I mean, look at that. That's like... That almost looked like an accelerator pedal going to the floor. There's so much travel. You know, it's just... It's ridiculous. So what on earth is going on here? Because that isn't how they're supposed to be. And in my experience, fitting pedal boxes, it's not how they are. And yet here we are watching real life footage of real life race cars and that, the pedal going straight to the floor, almost under braking. And then you see, him, you see him trail braking on the way out. This clip here is on icy rally stage and the brake pedal is still moving further than you would see, you know, in like the Invicta pedals that I reviewed the other day. So, what is going on here? And you know, this, this is a really interesting question because for a brake pedal to move as far as we just see there, especially, you know, the one before last, I think, where the pedal almost looks like it hits the floor, where is the fluid going? Fluid doesn't compress. As long as there's no air in the lines um, and no water in there, and even water doesn't compress, to be honest, not, not easily. The, the hydraulic fluid doesn't compress. So for that pedal to be moving as far as we see there, the fluid has to be going somewhere. If there was a leak, the pedal would go down and it wouldn't return because the fluid would have been pushed out of wherever the leak was. So could it be that some of these race cars are running servo assistance? In which case we're getting a bit more pedal travel, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I don't see why you do that. You'd have all the disadvantages of running servo assistance that you, you, you know, you remove that servo and you fit, uh, you know, a race pedal box sort of direct braking setup 
so that you don't have the drawbacks of an overly sensitive servo assisted setup. The inconsistent assistance of vacuum operation and assistance based on engine revs and load, you, you don't have any of that. You know, it's solid, it's consistent, it's repeatable. So what is going on here? You know, like I say, there can't be a leak because it would go down and not come back up. Could it be the brake hoses expanding? You know, when, when you brake and then, and then going back to normal size? No, it really shouldn't be because they shouldn't be doing that. If your hoses were doing that, you should be using different hoses. They shouldn't expand under braking, you know, um, the flexi pipes I'm talking about here that literally go um, from the hard pipes, like in your wheel arch, to your brake calipers. You have to have flexi hoses or you'd be unable to steer. But they shouldn't be expanding and compressing, certainly not, you know, to accommodate the pedal travel we see there. And if we've got no leaks and we've got, you know, and nothing's flex, I mean, the hard pipes obviously are not bending and flexing around to allow for this travel. That's just impossible. And the pedal box itself where it's bolted down isn't flexing and moving around. It is solid. What we see there is the brake pedals in all those clips traveling a fair old way. So well, what is going on? I don't know the answer to this. Like, which is why I'm making this video. I'm curious if there's any real life racers out there that have encountered this level of travel on a proper pedal box setup with no servo assistance and could explain to me what's going on. Because I haven't got a clue. In, you know, in my mind, if that braking system is functioning properly, when you push your brake pedal, which in turn pushes the piston in the master cylinder in, that then pushes fluid out the back of the master cylinder through your brake lines and then fluid you know comes out the other end of your hard pipe into your flexi pipe in your wheel arches um, and then into the caliper and then inside the caliper the pistons have the fluid behind them and the pistons are pushed out a tiny bit to take up a very small amount of gap between your brake pads and your discs now one of the things you see in these um, pedal cam clips, but not these ones, but if you watch the full clips on YouTube, you see racers just dabbing the brake every now and then on the approach to a corner before they actually properly brake. And what they're doing there is they're making sure that the pads are as close to the discs as they can be, ready for when they brake, so there isn't a huge amount of travel to take up, because what happens when you're belting down a track and you've got rock hard suspension and, and solid you know, suspension mounts and what have you, you get a lot of vibration and the, the pads actually work their way back from the disc, creating a bigger gap than what you would have otherwise. So real racers, they dab the brakes every now and then on the approach to a, a braking zone to make sure those pads are pushed back and that that slack has gone so that there's pressure there straight away on the pedal. And yet we see here in these clips, huge amounts of travel, even the rally stage at the end there, the guy's on ice, you know, so he's not braking particularly hard, and yet the pedal still has quite a lot of movement in it, not as much as some of the other clips, but movement nonetheless. So I'm, you know, I'm quite confused by what's going on there, you know, and, and going back briefly to the amount of force required to press a, you know, because that's the travel sort of question addressed there. It, it, the pedals really do travel a lot, at least in these videos that I'm seeing here. Um, and the other, you know, other comment was about how hard the pedal is to press down. And I referenced, you know, F1 seeing up to 150 kilos of force. That force, um, the press, the the force at which you apply your foot to the brake pedal, is multiplied under braking. Um, the inertia, the momentum that you and your vehicle have got as you try and slow down physically sort of translates down your leg to the pedal. So, you know, another reason you want a heavy brake pedal in a real race car is because under heavy braking, the force you apply is multiplied and it would be far too easy to over brake. Um, the best way to explain this is when, you, when you're sort of harnessed into your seat, even with them done up as tight as you possibly can, there has to be there has to be room for you to breathe, you know, for a start. You need to be able to inhale, exhale, so your chest will expand. But there is always some give 
in the harnesses, in the seat, in our cells. You know, we're, we're not made of concrete or steel, we're, we're squishy as humans. So um, when you brake, your body does shift forward a little bit against the harnesses, and that means your braking leg is shifting forward with that momentum, with that force that you're traveling at trying to decelerate, and that aids pushing the brake pedal down. So it's another reason that brake pedals are designed to be heavy in race cars, because otherwise it's too easy to over brake, and you'd end up pushing that pedal further than you want and locking up your wheels and you know, potentially having an accident. So it's well documented, and we know, if you just do a little bit of research, that brake pedals in race cars are heavy, and shouldn't travel very far. And yet, in the clips we see there, and if you want to have a little YouTube around yourself, we're seeing proper race pedal boxes that, as far as we can see, don't have any servo assistance. You, you know, you can see they're an aftermarket pedal box. You wouldn't then naturally run that to a servo. And yet they have huge amounts of travel. So I have no idea, you know, why, why that is. I thought, oh, maybe very brief thought was maybe it's the ABS kicking in, you know, but because obviously like modern GT3 guys will have ABS. Um, and, you know, racers will naturally just overbrake a little bit and let the ABS kind of take care of it for a, a fraction of a second before easing off. Quite normal. But whilst that will make the pedal pulse as it's turning the, the, the force on and off to whichever wheel happens to be locking up, it won't allow for the pedal to go as far as we're seeing in some of those video clips there. So, you know, I'm not a real life race driver. I do work on fast road cars and track cars and have done for the last decade or so. So I have a little experience, but I don't know why we're seeing what we're seeing there. Um, because it shouldn't be how it is from what I can tell and from my limited experience. So if anyone has any insight as to why we're seeing such huge pedal travel, Please stick it in the comments because I'm I'm quite interested to know just what is happening when you see the pedal move that far. Where is the the fluid going? You know, assuming there's no leaks and it's not compressing because you've got huge amounts of air in the system. What on a technical level is actually happening there? You know, the pads haven't moved back so far in the calipers that you've got all that slack to take up. And then you know when you, when you see people lift off in these videos and then they're back on it again a couple of seconds later. The pads certainly haven't made their way back two inches into calipers, you know? And I'm sure, you know, at the start of each race, they're not running with low enough pads. Pads are worn down so much that they could go back that far, you know, to accommodate that sort of pedal travel, um, you know? And even if it did, it would only do it once, and then the pads would just back off a little bit throughout the race, you know, before the next corner, and you'd only have to apply a little dab and they'd be back hard up against the disc again. So I'm, I, you know, I don't know why there's that much travel. Um, and credit to the guy in the comments, you know, he said if you look at the, the pedal cam videos on YouTube, there's loads of travel. So I had to have a look. I'm not one of these people that goes, oh, no, that's definitely not the case. You know, if, if they're there, let's take a look and see what's going on. So that's what I've done. You've seen the clips. Take a look for yourselves. If anyone can shine any light on where some of that ridiculous pedal travel is coming from, I would like to know. So uh, yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy.